today I'm going to go through what a typical first interaction is for a customer or consultant. Um, so you can see I have a form that was filled out giving a link, username, and password um, to the application. We usually send these out if somebody requests a demo or wants to try a pilot or if we're just going through a demo the first time. <clears throat> It'll lead you to a link. As I showed, you can click the launch button, click the install button. Either way, um, it should start this download. If it gets blocked, you'll have to talk to someone in Pro Planner support. Once it's finished downloading, um, choose Assembly Planner Authentication, go back to that email, and type in the username and password. The application will load some default settings. Um, generally, we'll have all of the different modules set up um, for new users. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take an existing working instruction I have in Excel and upload it into Assembly Planner, creating a simple work instruction. First thing I'm going to do is go into the plant module. It'll show existing plants. Um, in some cases, we are using the same demo environments for different prospects um, or universities. So ignore anybody else's stations that are in there. If you want to add new stations, all you need to do is paste your list of stations into the ID. I'm adding the same thing in description. Um, you can choose a line. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, once we get into having orders in the system, the line becomes important, but until then, it's not that big of a deal if it's blank. Next, we're gonna go into the routing and we're going to create our process routing. Um, generally, what we're gonna do is make a process routing be an area on the line. Uh, so final assembly, transmission, some, some actual physical area on the line. All it really is, is it's a collection of different work centers, different stations, however you want to look at it, um, that happen to be in the same area. They generally follow the same schedule um, and have similar work content. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back here and I'm going to copy and paste all of my stations from the plant module that I had previously created. Um, and I'm going to paste them into the work center and description spots. I'm going to go in and just number these. Um, you can copy and paste this in too, but it's not that many. So I'm just going to type them in. Click save. Um, the system will put in some defaults for us, effective from, effective to, things like that. Um, and save everything back. Double clicking on the row will take you into the next level. Um, if I did that too fast, you can also right click on a row and select open. You can do that from any of our sheet views. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to copy the content of a single station, which you can see in the top right, which station it is, which operator it is. Um, I'm gonna copy all that content, so the different activities that may be performed within that station, into my station in Assembly Planner. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is filter it down so that I only have things that have time against them. Reason being, what I'm really trying to do is um, paste in everything that I might move around if I were to do a line balance. All right, so I'm going to paste in my sequence numbers, um, paste in my times, paste in my descriptions. Uh, time, I'm just gonna use estimated time. We have three different types, estimated, calculated, and observed. Estimated is the one that you can just paste in. The other two require a little bit more work. Um,
in this example, I do have a couple that are blank. Um, I just took this from a sample that I've done, but um, for now, I'm just going to mark them as TBD. I'll go back and figure out what those processes are later. Specifically for this one, I do have one more field that I want to fill out, um, totally optional, but pretty much anything you want to show up, we can find a place to put it. Click Save. Um, if you go back and look at it, I do have um, detail within a couple of these that needs to be added, some sub steps that don't have time. Um, but they do have more instruction. So I'm going to go into one of those um, and I'm basically going to finish out one page of this instruction. And then the idea is that you would go through and do the same work um, to fill in all the other ones. We also do have imports that can do this. Um, so if you do have a standard structure, um, you can work with us to figure out a quicker way to get things in rather than going through all the manual clicking. Um, but to get sub details in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the work step tab, um, copy my note and detail text into different work steps. So I'm going to say it's step number one and give it a description. And then I'm going to go into consumption and I'm going to add the parts that are required to do this activity. Um, so you can see here I have three different parts. I'm also going to add the parent. Um, reason being, if we have the parent, we know which bill of material it is. Um, and I can go, I can, I can run a function in assembly planner that will go up and tell me which models and options it's applicable for if I have a parent child combination. So, um, if I don't want to run that function and I want to go in and manually do this, which I have to do now, cause I don't have a full bill of material. Um, I'm going to grab that model, go to the models module, click add, add the model. For now, um, I'm just making up an alias. All an alias is is like a family of models, so you can group um, some together. Some customers have a lot of different model numbers, but they effectively mean the same thing with different option content. Um, so once I've added it to the model library, I can go in and I can either just paste it into the model option tab, or I can go into the add model button on the bottom right. Either way, when I hit save, it should save. So I'll show the other way now. Um, right click and remove, click add model. Then I can search for the model I'm looking for. You can do multi-select here, shift select, control select, um, or just search for the one you want. Click add, adds it in the exact same way. Another way you can add models, I'm doing this so that I can add this model to all of the tasks very quickly. Right click on the routing, um, click routing and option, route model and option details, and then like Excel or something, um, grab the right corner, drag up, drag down, copy and paste, whatever you wanna do um, to get the model across all the different fields. Once I close out, that's saved back to all the activities that I created. So if I go into any of them, they should all say that they're for that model. I need to undo my filter, find an activity that isn't the one that I was talking about or filter by model. 
If I filter by model, I see all of my tasks. I go into a random one, and I, I should see this model within the model option mapping tab. Now, if I go back here and try that filter again, what I'll see is I'll see that one task disappear. Or if I allow none to be active, I'll see that task. What I'm going to do now is show how you can run a work instruction. So I'm going to go to reports, deployment, work instruction. Uh, it's going to bring up a full filter. I'm not going to use any of those options for now. Just hit OK, see what I get. Um, by default, all of our systems will be set up with one type of instruction. Um, these are highly customizable. Every customer has a different setup. So we basically just picked one and threw it up here. It's basically the first one that we ever made. Um, if you show us one that you're using, we generally pick one that's closer to that. <laughs> for the first setup, you can see all of my tasks are there. The parts are there for the one that I have, but no images. Um, if I go in there, and run process details, you can see a little bit different uh, format. So this is just kind of showing. We have a lot of different ways to aggregate this information. Uh, just kind of depends how you want to see it. Um, what you can see is that I have the parts that I set up earlier with their quantity, um, what model is bringing in the task. And if I were to run this again for only that model, that one task that doesn't have a model wouldn't show up. So if I want to add an image, what I need to do is go to Documents, click Import, or I can go to my File Explorer and just drag an image in. We also have an image editor, uh, so you can add annotations and things like that. And we have a virtual build module uh, where you can mess with your AutoCAD 3D model drawings, add callouts, highlight, hide, whatever you want to do. Um, to create your images. But for now, I'm assuming that the image is already done. So I've gone in and added it. All I need to do is go into my work step and say SOP image. I want my wiring. Once I save this and run my work instruction report again, this time it shouldn't just be a giant blank space. I should have my image. So I've gone and I've created one work instruction in 10 minutes. Um, basically what you would have to do is repeat this process for each one. Or if you can show us a systematic way to do it, like if, if I can follow this process every time, what we can do is go in and um, automate a way to do it. So this was just a quick little example of how to get a very simple work instruction in. Um, I'm going to do a few more of these videos to go a little bit more in depth into different things you can do. But this is how you would get started if you requested a cloud environment to play around in um, at this time.